Our guest today is Kevin Ashley. How are you today, Kevin? I'm doing great, David. Thank you. Thanks for hosting me. Oh, it's good to see you again. It's been a long time. Yeah, last time I think we uh, we met was uh, at one of the Microsoft uh, machinery events, actually. That was a lot of fun. We did that basketball thing, and we recorded an interview with it, and uh, it was really well received. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you're doing some new stuff now. I know you're doing a lot of artificial intelligence things, and, and you're also an artist. And you combine those together, right? Well, it's uh, it's interesting. It's actually, you know, I rediscovered that. Uh, in fact, um, I um, <clears throat> I can actually draw, and uh, uh, and thanks uh, thanks to the uh, research that I was working on uh, in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, which results in uh, in another book, by the way. And um, what happened was, I mean, uh, as kids, we we all like to draw, right? And you, David, you you probably draw as well. I haven't I seen your you do? Oh do, yeah, do, you, you don't know what you're missing. I'll send some to you sometime. <laughs> but do you do you still do you still draw now or sometimes? We, sometimes. It helps you see, relax. And and you know, I um, what I discovered is uh, my first book, which is actually you know what I'll I'll try to show it here. But this was my first book um, uh, about machine learning, and it was about uh, it was about sports and. Uh, <clears throat> sort of applying artificial artificial intelligence in sports and um, I tried to do some illustrations there and uh, you know just looking at the quality of illustrations they're very very basic right uh, don't have a lot of color and um, uh, what I was thinking about for the next book um, can I use uh, artificial intelligence to uh, to actually improve uh, the quality of of the drawings uh, you know just like uh, uh, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm not a professional illustrator. Um, I'm not a professional artist. Let's put it this way, right? Uh, but uh, just like everybody else, uh, uh, in you know, when we were kids, right, we probably had a lot of enthusiasm about drawing and uh, just illustration, and we keep doing that until we maybe maybe five or six. Uh, by the age of seven or nine, when we learn about perspective and how to do more complicated scenes. Um, you know, we have a lot of information, but we really start abandoning this gift. And uh, that's what I was trying to, uh, to fix, actually, in this book. It's, uh, it's literally a, a guide. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a guide for adults, uh, for anybody, not, not just for data scientists or, uh, you know, engineers. But it's, it's really a guide of how to use artificial intelligence to... Uh, improve your own skill to improve your, uh, you know, illustration or drawing skills. And um, just to give you an idea, I'll, I'll try to show that. I'll, I'll see if, if that works. Uh, if not, then we can just... Uh, That's the book right there. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So some of the illustrations, most of the illustrations, actually, and I did hundreds of illustrations for this book. And uh, this book cover, uh, you know, illustrations uh, throughout the book uh, are all done... Um, by uh, myself with a little help from machine learning. And uh, I was, you, you know, you, 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 you'll be the judge, right? I mean, but this is the quality of illustrations um, uh, in, 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 in the book. And it's a huge progress uh, from, uh, you know, the early sketches that I've done um, uh, with the previous book, right? And uh, what I came up uh, with uh, in, uh, in this new one. Uh, now you mentioned uh, that it uh, it helps you to improve your drawing, but it doesn't actually create the drawing, right? You, there's still a, some manual artistic work involved in this process, right? Well, that's that's a great question. So um, I remember reading a fantastic manual by uh, Betsy Edwards. Uh, she uh, uh, she wrote a book uh, several years ago, actually. Uh, probably 20 years ago, and uh, it became uh, a New York Times bestseller. It, it really is until now. I think she sold like uh, 2 million copies or something like that. And the book is about using the right side of the brain, um, you know, for drawing, for illustration. And she really tried to explain to adults how to improve the skill. 
So back to your question, uh, do you actually use, uh, you know, the AI uh, fully, completely, or do you use it partially as a, as a partner? So the method that I created in this book uh, is, uh, first of all, it's for anyone. It's not for PhDs. It's not for data scientists. It's not for, uh, you know, engineers. You know, you can, lucky, you can, lucky me that it's not. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you can, you can literally, you know, you can, you can walk into uh, an airport bookstore if you at some point start flying again, right? And, um, you know, literally you can pick up my idea was that you can pick up this book and uh you know at the on the plane you, you can actually learn how to relearn how to draw again uh and maybe start applying this 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 new methods and uh with, with ai so back to your question uh some of the models today some of the machine learning methods and i i have a bunch of notebooks and examples so this book is actually very very practical also uh you can be a data scientist and you can you know you can plunge into the details or you can be just anybody uh like you and me right and and or you know your kids for example and they can pick up the book and, and literally just try okay well can i can i just try and and, and use ai to to improve my uh, my own creativity and skills so um some of the AI methods allow you to simply speak what you want to do. So you can just say, draw or paint um, uh, a cucumber in a, in, a, in, a, you know, in a pink outfit walking a dog. You know, you can, you can do that. You can say these things. And there are models today that will actually paint a cucumber in a pink outfit walking a dog for you so you can um you can augment your creativity at any um at any point of your artwork right so you can you can start with the text you can start with the speech you can start with uh just a sketch right if you like sketching for example you can start with that you, you don't have to um uh, start completely from scratch or if you like uh, a certain part of the creative process like sketching or line art or coloring you can just simply apply uh, you know uh, AI models at that at that particular phase interesting uh, and you said there's um I, I have to read you sent me a uh, an excerpt of the book and I noticed that this there are applications within uh, fine arts and graphic design uh, movies animation films um, this is this is a technique that's used across a broad number of industries. That's correct. And uh, um, so uh, I actually I went through a lot of research and I read all the class. I, I mean, I read probably a bunch of classical books on animation and, uh, um, you know, from Walt Disney Studios, for example. Uh, so the golden ages of animation, um, the golden age of animation was, I think, in, in 1930 to 1950, approximately. When everything was manual. When everything was manual. And so how that worked is that uh, uh, animators uh, literally, uh, and, and so you, have, you had a, a master uh, guy, so to speak, right? So somebody who actually knew or had the idea about the entire concept of the animation, right? And so he would he would draw like you know frame from frame frame one and frame ninety six, which would amount to a, approximately four seconds of uh, of uh, you know of of your uh, animation, right? And uh, you know he would he would let the other guys who actually worked for for Walt Disney, for example, to uh, to draw the remaining remaining ninety four frames. And uh, and that's the hard work, right? Because you, yeah. you have to really. I mean, uh, have you have you tried animating stuff? I actually have. Uh, I have. I used to. I made a couple of video games, and I I stuck with stick figures to make okay. it easier. But uh, but still, I had uh, like half a dozen frames or a dozen frames that made somebody wave their arms and things like that. It's hard. It's a challenge. I mean, it's very it's labor intensive. Exactly. Stick figures. Exactly, it's it's very labor intensive, and I admire animators like uh, Heyo Miyazaki, for example, right? Oh, I'm a huge fan. Of, oh, uh, Studio Ghibli or Ghibli—I don't know how to say it. But... I, I, yeah, I think they even pronounce it Ghibli. I, I've heard that pronunciation <laughs> for some reason. Anyway, so he actually is releasing the first, um, and so I watched a documentary about Heyo uh, Heyo Miyazaki working in his studio. Uh, and the way he draws, you know, I, I watched the entire process. He works in a very traditional way, right? So he starts with um, uh, those, uh, you know, those sheets of paper, right? So literally, you know, he draws on the sheets of paper 
uh, and uh, you know there are there are pegs, uh, and then then they can kind of just manually uh, you know look through different frames and, and see uh, see the animation going, and it's a hard work. So um, what I found is with our, in in this book is with artificial intelligence you can. Um, animate part of the movie. You can animate speech, for example. You can animate lip lip movement, right? So you don't. You can start with just one single image to animate the entire speech pattern of a character, mm. and uh, that, that's a that's a huge amount of work. So uh, anybody can actually use it, um, including professional animators. Tell me about your process for doing it. So it looks like I think you created this um, uh, picture of the girl with the blue arm. Uh, based on this famous painting here, right? Right. So this what's is the, what's one... the process you went through. Right. So that, that's actually one of the examples, and um, the process is is called uh, universally um, uh, le- uh, uh, style transfer. So uh, essentially, what happens is um, uh, at uh, in one of the research pa- papers, and a lot of this AI stuff actually is buried in uh, in archive articles, in you know, in research, uh, you know, stuff that uh, no nobody actually wants to go to unless you're really, really interested in this stuff, right? So I, I kind of I had to kind of um, go to archive, you know, find the source code, discover these things, find what what people are actually working on, um, and. Um, uh, somebody wrote a very famous paper for uh, data scientists at some point, maybe uh, a few years ago. Actually, a lot of this research happened just recently, so it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's brand new. And uh, uh, the paper was about how to find how to separate style and content in um, in any work of art, actually. And so what I did here exactly is I I took the uh, Vermeer's famous uh, girl with a pearl uh, earring uh, painting and then I put together a sketch and it's just a sketch literally that I, uh, you know, this is uh, this is all I'm capable of right now as as an engineer. Right. But um, I um, I I, I had a sketch. uh, So a basic line art. And then I I made the uh, AI model transfer the style from uh, the original painting, from uh, Vermeer's painting, to uh, to my sketch. And notice a few very interesting things here. Is that uh, so? uh, Largely, the picture on the right is um, is untouched. So I didn't really improve it much, uh, you know, manually after this. So I didn't polish it or or do any of the stuff except uh, just a little bit of uh, eyes hint right here, but. The interesting thing is that uh, when you work with uh, machine learning models as uh, as an artist, as an illustrator, think about working as um, uh, you know, like you work with a buddy, like you work with a partner rather than a tool. So it's not really a tool that you're working with; it's really an intellect. It's uh, the artificial intelligence uh, in uh, in uh, in a very real sense of the world. I mean, some of these models um, are very successful at passing the Turing test today. So they are equivalent to human. It is scary, I know. But <laughs> the, the, the Turing test, uh, describe the Turing test real quickly. So the Turing test is a game, really. So the Turing test, um, there are, and there is a visual Turing test as well, which actually is more applicable here. So the visual Turing test is about, um, uh, you, you're given a picture. Uh, of you know a picture painted, for example, by uh, a, a machine learning model, right? And then uh, something painted by a human. And uh, so, can you tell the difference between between the two? Can you tell that this one is painted, for example, by by the machine learning model, and this one is painted by by the human? So, oh, yeah. uh, and the this Turing is where... test is any test that is designed to distinguish a computer from a human being. Exactly. And so that's that's the idea. And so uh, some of these models are so good that, for example, uh, it literally picks up, it knows that these are the eyes. It knows that, um, you know, these are the lips, right? So it knows where the lips are. It knows, knows where the hair is, right? So it paints this thing, uh, this things and these parts of the body, these features, it, it paints, uh, paints them uh, based on... Um, it's uh, it's training essentially. So if you train the model on a lot of anime or manga pictures, which is exactly what happened here, you're gonna get actually uh, a resemblance to uh, you know to uh, to a lot of anime and manga pictures. And with exactly. But I see you also got the, 
I think the machine learning model added this to it. You've got some shading that just gave it a three-dimensional effect. Well, that's that's another interesting thing. And actually, in my book, I have lots of tips uh, about how to uh, how to work together with AI. And this is something I believe nobody has done before because. You know, most of the most of the research papers they are focused on how to build the models, right? Most of the um, you know just uh, programming manuals are, are 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 based on how to program these models. So this book really explains how to use the models as an artist, right? So for example, how to use it cooperatively, uh, in, you know, in um, in collaboration with AI. And so for example, uh, back to the back to the shades and the three dimensional look, right? Um, the fact that machine learning models uh, today, uh, recognizing the face, are very good at actually figuring out the face orientation in three-dimensional space. How this is done, um, I can go deep into that. For example, the iris uh, actually is universally known to be around 11 millimeters or so, right? And so you can actually figure out the depth and uh, the orientation of the face in space, which is some of the what, what some of the Google models actually do today. Um, you know, uh, with the face orientation, they detect 486 features of the face. So the entire face is literally mapped out like, like a map. Um, and so uh, it figures out the orientation, it figures the light, um, and um, it can uh, provide, you know, a, a, basic, a, a basic lighting to the picture, but you can also change the lighting. And so in... Um, <clears throat> Uh, in my book, there is a part where I specifically talk about uh, shading and light. And uh, this is where it actually becomes very interesting. So you can actually change where the light is coming from. You can change the scene, right? And you can sort of tune your, uh, your uh, final um, image to be, um, to be under certain light lightning conditions, for example. Hmm. Tell me about some of the tools you use to use AI to create this artwork? Yeah, so uh, w when, I was, when I was thinking about, um, about how to make this book uh, understandable for anybody, uh, I, um, I realized that, uh, let's say, if I go very deep into uh, Python and, uh, let's say, uh, machine learning models, right, and, uh, you know, ask, for example, my readers to install uh, a complex Conda environment with lots of dependencies and PyTorch and Keras and all these different things, it would be too complicated, probably. So what I came up with is uh, this idea of actually having uh, just a cloud-based uh, notebooks. Very, very simple, very basic. So literally, um, I tried to... say it. notebooks, you mean Jupyter Notebooks? You can call them Jupyter Notebooks, yes. Uh, they are basically, uh, you can use Colab Notebooks. There are, there are many notebooks that don't require any uh, prior configuration today okay. with, uh, uh, with, you know, on, on your computer. You can literally just click the link. It's all in the cloud. It's all in the cloud. And if you know a few basic uh, things on, as an artist, right, on how to use, um, how to use them, uh, and if they are simple enough, then anybody can actually use them, including I actually tried it with um, my wife. She's an artist as well. She she draws beautiful watercolors, and uh, I included some of some of the style transfer as an example of you know how this can be done. And so she, um, uh, I explained how to how to use them to her. It took her probably 10, 15 minutes. And uh, she was able to do style transfer and she was able to practice this stuff. So she was able to actually create or generate pictures and images that uh, are created with AI in a sense, but uh, they are um, uh, also, uh, they providing her with additional inspiration or insights about you know, how, to, how to do maybe some other pictures, or how, uh, how to create uh, uh, other artwork. How can people get the book? Is it available today? So the book is right now in uh, in a, under heavy development. Uh, it's okay. in, on Kickstarter. It's going to be available in two months. Uh, it's okay. probably eighty percent ready. Uh, okay. So the barcode that you see here, the QR code, is actually on Kickstarter. I'll and, have a link uh, to it as well. Thanks. And uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, you can uh, you can order the book uh, through Kickstarter uh, today with actually a bunch of rewards, uh, and uh, I'll finish it probably within the next uh, month, month and a half. 
and just so people know, uh, because these don't get published as soon as I record them, it's February 5th of 2021 right now. So uh, <laughs> the two months from now is a, in early April. Yeah, it's it's amazing how things become um, outdated. But but really, uh, yes. So if you if you happen to watch David's video uh, after uh, after this period of time, when you get to Kickstarter, it will simply redirect you to uh, to the page where you can actually get the actual book. Terrific, Kevin. Thank you so much for your time. This is really Absolutely. interesting. I wish I wish you the best of luck with the book. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Thanks for hosting me, and I really enjoy being a guest on your show. I'd like to say that um, technology is uh, is your friend, and uh, to make technology a truly friendly environment, you have to simplify it a little bit, right? And so that's exactly what uh, what I try to do in this book. I try to simplify this technology to make it uh, very simple and uh, accessible to to anybody. But I believe that um, uh, technology and uh, uh, and anybody can be can be friends.